All right, guys, two down, and we move on to the Dennis. youngest Wilson brother mm-hmm. from the Beach middle. Boys. Is, oh, so I'm sorry, you're right, middle. I apologize. Yeah, Brian's the oldest, right, and Carl's the, the youngest, correct? That's my understanding, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, gotcha. So the middle. Uh, Beach but Dennis Boy, was probably Dennis the was. least, I don't know, famous of the three Beach, bro- Beach Boys brothers, perhaps? I don't know. He's probably the the least thought of in terms of the context of the Beach Boys, right? Because Carl Wilson sang so many of the great hooks, and right. Brian is considered the genius. and you know. But Dennis did sing some famous... But anyway, we'll get into that. Run the numbers, okay. Matt, and then we'll yep. kind of get into it. Yep. So we've got Dennis Wilson's Pacific Ocean Blue. It comes in at number 418 in the 1970s on Best Ever Albums, number 41 in 1977. 2084 of all time it is his highest rated album on best ever albums it's one of two <laughs> so it's not really there's even have a whole lot of uh, output uh this is not on rolling stones list either so uh again i'm assuming it's another 1001 album we need to hear before we die i'm guessing and, yeah yeah and john you said you went down a rabbit hole ta- looking into his life oh right? my god i could do a whole episode <laughs> just on his bio my god the dude is why did you lived. decide to break the rules on Dennis Wilson by just was there something that was you were looking for or like what 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 caused you to do that? I well, let me get into my take and maybe okay, that'll okay. explain I so a uh, little spoiler alert for you guys. I've never done heroin before. I have. <laughs> I've never done heroin before. So I I, I apologize. <laughs> yes, yeah. I You're well, still alive, John. I feel the closest I've ever done to doing heroin is listening to this. I used to describe dirt by Alice in Chains as the cl- but I've decided wow. that dirt is less about me doing heroin and more me listening to like you know what i mean someone who does heroin described to me what heroin's like this album on the other hand is like the sonic sound of what i imagine being on heroin is like really absolutely because it's a soul album yes certainly (laughs) you know which we were prepared for i think if we hadn't listened to wild honey right earlier we might not have been as prepared. Like I knew Surf's Up and Sunflower and stuff that, you know, without Brian Wilson, right, the Beach Boys kind of become more of a, um, well, if Mike Love has his way, right, they become like a, you know, 50s and 60s sort of act. But when the other Wilsons are there, they kind of become this like homage to like soul, right? That's the sound that the Beach Boys are. And this definitely is sounds like some of what 70s beach boys sounds like so i was not surprised i think i was as the kids would say i am not i was not prepared for the vibe in this album as much and (laughs) and there is to me a definitive vibe in this album um the lyrics are a combination of like the type of lyrics you'd write if you were on like a spiritual retreat mixed with like those that someone who went through significant trauma would write and dennis wilson's life is sort of a mix of significant trauma Mm -hmm. mixed with someone who is always on a spiritual journey when i did my homework on him you know what Mm -hmm. i mean and that was kind of what i wanted to look at like i know how the beach boys were raised by papa wilson i know it was not friendly i did not realize that apparently dennis got it the worst of anybody he was apparently he was the only guy who actually surfed he was the rebel like you know, along the right, you know, I mean, he just was basically he was doing his own thing his entire life and kind of didn't take it. And, you know, that there's intros and outros of, you know, he spent time uh, close to Charles Manson with like 15 women living at his house for a while, but then realized mm-hmm. it was getting violent. He claims he saw the Manson family murder people you know along the way he obviously was strongly chemically enhanced for most of his life um even the story of his death is he basically went diving into the ocean to find things he'd thrown into the ocean from his ex-wife and i guess you know basically that led to like shallow drowning i guess and there's just and then he was buried at sea they had to They had to ask for him to literally be buried, his whole body at sea, not cremated, keep in mind. Like, they literally, like, did the military, you know what I mean, when you dump somebody in the sea. Uh, I think he was Uh, very, very drunk, too, when he was doing those – I mean, he wasn't he a huge alcoholic at that point, too? Yes, he struggled mightily. They said uh, loosely he struggled with alcohol and other drugs. And like I said, I would be shocked if LSD, pills, and heroin were not, like, some of those drugs that were part of it. But – I, I did like this album, though. It has a really cool vibe to it. 
Um, it's kind of, um, it's not pretty in the traditional sense, the sound of it, Mm -hmm. but it's charming in its own way. It sucks you in. I I remember when we did that Sly and the Family's, I remember that they talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, I remember we talked about that Sly and the Family Stone album. There's a riot going on. And Robert Criscal, or one of the critics said something like, it's a dangerous album because it makes sort of like nihilistic drug use look seductive in its own way. And it kind of like invites you in and you kind of want to go in, but you know you shouldn't go in there. Like I got a similar type vibe through this album. Hmm. Um, I'm interested to hear Matt's take because he clearly, by his hmms, is like getting a different take. And I'm curious to see what it is. Uh, his voice is really interesting because it's so gruff. I mean, the only big mm-hmm. beach, big hit Beach Boys song that he sings is uh, Do You Want to Dance, which is kind of ironic, right, mm. this week, because we're yeah. going to see that song come <laughs> back up again. Uh, but like, And that song I always liked, but he's got that uh-huh. huskier voice. And uh, I, I like the sound of it, though. Um, so I'm going to step back for a sec, because there's other comments I want to make, but I don't want to je- like take away this whole thing and i'm really curious to hear what the two of you guys think of this album so i guess matt your next thoughts i love this album i figured um, you would I, I had a feeling you would freaking yeah. loved this album yep. i was not <laughs> i did not know what to expect i was i thought it was interesting with dennis wilson like the least known wilson yeah. brother like that's the thing that came to my mind and we talked about it last week i'm like oh charles manson right wasn't they yeah, that that's what comes to him and he plays the drums for the beach boys yeah, and as so, i was listening i was like i have a feeling matt's gonna love this album yeah i really did this is um i actually i found multiple parts of this album actually very beautiful like they're p there's it's a lot of piano parts um and a lot of the songs kind of start off slow but but just there's these beautiful walking piano parts, these notes that are just it's just very pretty. Um, the production, I see what you're saying, John, but I I I, I wasn't getting the reason I'm kind of like question. I I wasn't. Yes, I knew he was big into alcohol and drugs and stuff like that. I I I was not feeling like oh man, now I know what it's like to do heroin after listening to this yeah, in terms I mean, of sonically. I I, I didn't not lyrical not, content by the way. It was it was the sound right, but even that like that. And I'm not listening to the lyrics. I I could tell it was sad. I mean, it definitely has like a somber, melancholy kind of aura around it. Um, so I, uh, you know, it, it's one of the songs, Farewell, My Friend, you know, it's, some of them is even in the title and you're just like, yeah, th- you know, thoughts of you and you can just tell that, you know, it, there's certainly some melancholy here, but uh, I was not thinking that this was like this. Uh, I, I wasn't thinking, wow, drug album. You know what I mean? Like that's, that, yeah. that wasn't a prevailing thought for me. Uh, it was more of just being very impressed with the overall sound of the record of um, th- the variety of instrumentation that's going on here there's and then i did look i did peek and i did do a deep dive but i just saw there's a lot who was, of people on it. <laughs> exactly who's contributing <laughs> yeah. to this and this yeah. is one of those just litany of all these people that are doing all kinds of stuff in here and you've got you know um you know you've got orchestration you've got you know um I, I actually the second track uh what's wrong i was thinking of harry nilsson i thought that there were some harry nilsson um mm-hmm. parallels here in terms of just how interesting the songs were put together, but how the bass, it was just either couched in a, in a, in a really pretty melody or a very catchy hook. Um, there's some doo-wop stuff going on here. There's, um, there's like a blues, there's blues rock. Um, I, I, I felt that um, Friday night was interesting. It's kind of got this dramatic, you know, kind of beginning with this sustained synth kind of chord that's being played throughout the song. It sounded mm-hmm. like a Pink Floyd song, to be honest. It, you know, it sounded like a more of a, a happier lighter pink floyd if you know, but still kind i don't of think like... that sounds happy i thought it sounded i thought I, my note on that was it sounds like what dennis wilson looks like on the cover of the album that's <laughs> my note on that <laughs> and if you look at the picture like how can you not kind of get a little bit of the vibe like yeah it's not a drug album but like it's impossible to hear this album without thinking that you know what i mean it was created in sort of like a sonic state that like that yes. was a piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, I was saying lighter compared to Pink Like, I was hearing a Pink Floyd sound, but not as heavy into the Pink Floyd, kind of like, you know, on the surface of, of that sound. Um, you know, and uh, so some of the stuff would have, like, the next song, Dreamer, had kind of like this funk groove going on, you know, and I, mm-hmm. you know, yep. kind of yes, talking about, like, like the soul kind of thing. Um, you know, there's horns, uh, you know, and then it's got that instrument. What's that? 
what's that big Australian didgeridoo? Yeah, it sounds like he's playing too. a didgeridoo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's not. I don't think it is. But it okay. sounds like it's it's kind of. I think it's in the didgeridoo family, Josh. I think that's what <laughs> it's it is. Like a know? shorter stick. <laughs> exactly. It's like the woodwinds, the brasses, and the didgeridoos. Um, gotcha. So <laughs> um, well, now I, I got to look up what that is. Because go ahead. <laughs> I couldn't find it at least on Wikipedia. I don't. Yeah. I couldn't tell what it was. But you'll know what you, if you hear that song. Yeah. You, you'll know what it is. You know that what I'm talking about. Um, and then it's got like a free jazz thing going on at the end. It's just really interesting and then the second the penultimate track's got the it's very mandolin it's got yes. heavy it's got like a banjo <laughs> mandolin thing going on so even this was just a real nice surprise it was just very pretty um i did my my super fan kevin did text me prior to the to me listening to it was telling me how much he loved this record and then he actually sent me a podcast i guess there was some podcast that was done about all like charles manson in general and one of the episodes was about dennis oh, wilson you must and remember kinda, this yeah Yes, Probably. right. That's it. Yeah. Yes, Josh. And um, so I did listen to that. So I got a little backstory of it. And it just, I found it very interesting. I don't know if I want to listen to like 12 episodes about Charles Manson. I don't know. No, if it's I, really good. If I want to be disturbed because <laughs> he sounded like a crazy dude. Um, but music, there's jazz, there's, there's, you know, there's, there's, you know, uh, a lot, of, but I think a piano is probably the prevailing instrument. And I'm, I'm, I, I'm assuming he's playing that um, on this, but um very good, very interesting. I only did one listen, but it was just many, many of my comments were like, "I really like this. This is really cool." <laughs> like that's my yeah. f- definitive answer for a lot of these songs. And I, you know, maybe if I listen to it more, maybe I'll hear a little bit more about what you're talking about, John. But yeah, it's there is definitely a melancholy, you know, sadness going on with this with the vibe. But um, I I probably enjoy. I think I might enjoy listening to this more than like a listening to like Pet Sounds or something. To you know, just mm. to, yeah, overall. I'm not saying it's better. I'm just saying I, and maybe part of it is just because I was so I, surprised at what he did. Um, at, I know what you're that, saying because you know, I so. I like this better than Smile by quite a bit. To be honest, mm-hmm. like a lot, yes. a lot yeah. more. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I don't think I loved it as much as Matt did, but I was also surprised by it and enjoyed it. It's it's we you know we've thrown out a lot of terms here but it's like a almost like a laid back soul album or like like a a mellowed out beach boys hippie jam band like beach beach sound to it i don't know well, there's a lot of well, things one of to... one of my other things from all music is they have words that describe the album and then album themes right okay. and album themes like five things the album themes for this are hanging out yeah. sunday afternoon introspection summer at the beach and drugs yeah that's the six things they have right i there, love so. all of those things so. <laughs> 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 so i uh so yeah like like john said right from the beginning that's the total vibe on this album and, and it comes through and i think it's a testament to his talent or you know at least his time in the beach boys is that he's willing to throw all of these instruments and people and musicians into it to create this kind of soundscape if you will of mm. of of this thing you know matt said the piano and the horns i i got that a lot and then um there's i think there's a lot of underlying blues he's not afraid to go into the blues direction he's not afraid to go into the funk sound like like you said and i, I kind of appreciate his willingness to to kind of see how he can meld all these things together into one album and into to a cohesive sound and you know right from the get-go it's he his voice is also so different than what you think of as the beach boys you know like you guys yeah. said it, it's rougher which kind of plays into that weathered beaten down mm-hmm. you know more mature type of uh a beach boy or, or you know person who's seen some things and uh and it has this spiritual element to it too in the river song which i think is the second track there's a lot of backing singers it's like a gospel choir almost it has yep. it keeps, it's the first has song this, actually it's first song, oh, yeah. oh right yeah. right yep and uh, it has this kind of uplifting spiritual thing it's like he's searching for something and it's like and, anthemic it's like this like an- anthem you know mm-hmm. like a call to something yeah yep and he that carries th- I, f- I feel like it carries through throughout the whole album and Again, after one listen, I would think I would definitely need to revisit it. But the overall impression left me with like a, you know, like a, a an appreciation and a, a knowing, 
you know, a, a welcoming feeling from it. I didn't get any sort of, um, you know, heroin strung out vibe or, or menacing sound to it. It was, it, it's something like the title. It kind of washed over me in a way. Well, remember I defined it. Remember I, I compared it to the slide in the family stunt where it's an inviting thing Mm -hmm. not a menacing so i do want to say that like i don't want to sit and take heroin but like the idea of it is like this seductive sort of like sedation kind of would be how i would describe the sound of this album yeah yeah and this is supposed to be the least musically talented beast beach boy by the way which is and he i I think he wrote I think he wrote all of these too. It's like it's not like you know. He co-wrote, co-wrote quite a few of them with the other. Like he wrote a couple with his brother Carl. He wrote a couple with Mike Love, and then he wrote some by himself, and then some with other writers. Yeah. I mean, the Beach Boys know how to pick their collaborators. They, you know, they've they've never struggled to find you know the musicians to kind of make it come to mm-hmm. peace. And and by the way, everything I've read says that Brian Wilson loved this album. By the yeah. way, like connected I... spiritually to this album, which. You absolutely could guess too. So, and he's yeah. not involved with it at all. Yeah, the one so. Beach Boy that, you know, yeah. the most talented one had nothing to do with it. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, in the same way that the Beach Boys were kind of manufactured, you know, they also had the talent, and 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 that comes through on this album. Yeah. Well, describe manufactured because they they created themselves, but oh, like okay. they manufactured an image of yeah. surfing when only Dennis did it, but. I always think of manufacturers like someone else puts you together. That that definitely is not the case with the Beach Boys. Like, okay. they, I mean, three of them are brothers and Mike loves their cousin, right? And Al Jardine was like one of their best friends. So they're just like, hey, we're an acapella group and now we're going to do, you know, surfer yeah. rock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So from that, I don't think of that as like the Runaways where they're like, hey, I met you. Not at the, I forget what the story for the runaway, not the mall, but like he meets what, you know, the first person somewhere and then kind of pieces, oh, you're friends with her, you know, and they kind of do it that way. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I like this album. I, I really did. And yeah. my first thought when I listened to it is, well, if Matt doesn't know this album, Matt's going to love this album because mm-hmm. this is like right up his alley. And I was pretty confident Josh was going to like this one too. So, yeah, this was, this was a good week because I mean, just two of the three that we've covered already were like really pretty big unknowns i mean i knew who dennis wilson was i didn't really know that he did a solo record and Mm -hmm. i certainly didn't know what to expect exactly but um i this and shoes were just like oh this is awesome you know so this i'm I'm glad we we i'm glad we listened to them so yeah can i just throw out if you're looking if you're looking for a wikipedia page dennis wilson's wikipedia page is pretty fucking epic so like if you are looking for something to go down a rabbit hole a little bit um you could do worse than dennis wilson's um Boy, in very interesting life. Only thirty nine <laughs> years of it too. So Oh jeez. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's sad. Yep. So he was the first to go and Carl was second and who would have thought that Brian would outlive the other I two? I know, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And live to his eighties. Yeah. So there you go. So 